What's going on guys? Resale back with another video. This time I'm covering Wave Janus and his insane consistency in the FNCS Invitational Grand Finals. I quickly want to thank you all for your support on my previous video and in particular VolaTW who reposted on YouTube which got a ton of traction so many many thanks to Legend in the Scene and everyone who supported. Okay, so Janus drops at steamy stacks and only loots the main building there. He then harvests the cars in the parking lot and then rotates to the truck to the south. In my VOD review of SF Roller, I noted that one of his constant issues was that he always left his draw spot without maximum metal. However, this is something that Janus highly prioritizes in his early game, getting max metal within the first few minutes of the game. Janus's material efficiency is something that is super obvious to watch when VOD reviewing his games. Along with harvesting up full materials early in his game, he is constantly refarming any materials that he uses as the game progresses. This gets him into the later zones, still with a good amount of mats. He rotates to first zone very early and in most games sat on the edge of second zone. In game 4, Janus intentionally decided to rotate to the centre of third zone despite having a good high ground layer at the edge. He sets himself up on a high ground position on the smaller hill as this is a stronger position to hold, to take shots and to rotate from. Because of this decision to get a high ground position near the centre of 3rd zone, his rotate to the 4th zone was effortless, using under 10 builds on the entire rotate. In contrast to this, in game 3 he had a poor edge position on the 3rd zone and took an opportunity to rotate into the zone early. He gets into zone only using 2 builds. This rotate was so free because he rotated early when other people were also focused on rotating early, meaning they weren't paying any attention to him. The main takeaway from these examples is that of course positioning natural high ground in the centre of third zone is a priority to ensure you have an easy fourth rotate, but the most important thing is that you rotate to fourth early, giving yourself the most time to move while still using the least amount of materials. Often people complain about their bad RNG when they don't get the fifth zone, but never learn actually how to rotate it. Out of the 10 games that Janus made to endgame, 8 of these were max or close to max distance 5th zones. He also only had a pad on 3 of these games and only used it here in game 1 when he had 4 launch pads. His main strategy was to reuse other people's pads. Now I and many other people always struggle to find a launch pad to reuse to get into 5th zone. To find a launch pad, Janus tarps a few boxes into zone in brick, then turns back so he has a greater view over where everyone was padding from. This allowed him to easily spot a launch pad to reuse and got him into the zone safely. It cost 60 to 100 materials, however he didn't die rotating to 6th in one single game. If he didn't manage to find a pad, chances were that the players around him have already tarped in by foot, meaning he simply walked in late, reusing the enemy builds that were in his way. Now every game is different and every zone is different, so yes, all of these strategies that I've talked about won't always work in every game. You're not always going to be able to get centered on third with a hill there because there's not always going to be one. So sometimes being on a hill not as close to center will be a better position. But I'm going to be doing a full video coming up covering the priority list for mid-game rotates in a future video. So please keep an eye out for that one. I've watched a lot of FNCS solos and duos and there wasn't a single player I watched in the top 10 every week of any region who used the harpoon in their late game as their main strategy. Most people relied on either launch pads from the Mythic POIs or floppers and fishing to be consistent. However, Janus shows how effective and consistent this strategy can be in his gameplay. This harpoon is a critical part of his strategy as he had one in 8 out of 12 games. Janus is constantly looking out for opportunities to snag up loot from the ground using the harpoon from 4th to 5th zone onwards. The most consistent way that he used the harpoon to get a refresh was to tarp ahead of zone loop back for any eliminations and then harpoon the loot from that. Even if he didn't get the points for the elimination, he'd still get the loot. Another interesting thing to note is that he really only fishes with a harpoon when he needs a flopper to heal, saving the charges for endgame. He got hit by a sniper in game 5 and only used one use to fish a single flopper to heal back up and then didn't use another use despite the fact that there were still fishing holes there available. Janice won one game out of the 12 that he played despite being so consistent. In the one game that he won, he used the harpoon to knock down Aqua from height for an easy retake. He then got an easy elimination on him as Aqua had no materials. The harpoon then came in really clutch to pick up the slurpfish and the floppers that he dropped and set himself up for an almost unlosable game. Didn't end up needing these as he hits a fat pump on Kami who grapples up, but this still set him up for an absolute sure victory. If you're not landing at a mythic POI, which hopefully will be gone next season, and you're not a flopper player, 
Think about taking a harpoon in your inventory. The amount of clutch plays that were made with this and additional points that he gained purely from taking the harpoon really, really showed me that you should be taking one too. Okay, so let's look at Janice's end games. We've already established how he gets to the end game with really good loot. So he does this with his smart rotations, using the harpoon, and his great material efficiency. But how does he actually play the moving zones? Okay, so let's firstly look at the sixth zone, the first moving zone. How does he play this? Well, the three games he has a launch pad, he uses it here in the first moving zones. He's looking to land as ahead of zone as possible. In five of the nine games, he reused someone else's pad here. And he did the exact same strategy he did at the fifth zone. He boxed ahead a little bit, had some good visibility through his cone, looked backwards, and then found a pad and used it. There was only one game where he couldn't find a pad, and he had a bandy cannon, so he just waited in the zone, took a couple bandy cannon shots, and kept moving in. It was very, very clear that moving in the sixth zone by foot was absolutely a last resort for Janus. So when he launch padded, he was really in no way looking to take height here. This is because it's way too early in the game to take height in solos. If he goes for it now, all he's going to do is waste his materials and eventually get shot down. It'd be really scuffed later. In solos, people usually take height to win the game around the seventh zone, sometimes before, sometimes after. So padding onto it while you're moving towards sick is definitely too early. So what does he do? He gets ahead of the zone and tarps into the sixth zone. So he's way ahead of everyone. And like I said earlier, he looks for eliminations and then also to harpoon back more loot. Even in one game, re-farming a brick outside of his box through a window to get more materials back. Like I said earlier, taking height in the endgame really wasn't a priority for Janus, but the times he did get it were more opportunistic. He got ahead of the zone, and if it was free, he took it. If not, he kept rotating. Even when he did get height, he wasn't over-committing to it. He was tarping on a single brick cone, which is easy to get shot out. Then, when he gets contested, he doesn't even try to keep it. He just drops down and continues to keep ahead of the zone. This lack of commitment to height was purely because he wanted to be material efficient. Something that he's done throughout the entire game and something that you guys really need to be picking up on and doing in your own game too. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. It, the support that you guys have given me over the last couple of days has warmed my heart. It has been so good. I gained over a thousand subs when I only had 1.7k. So super appreciate everyone who likes, comment, subscribed. I love you all. Trust me. Hope you guys have a good day and I'll catch you next time.